ThatGreatBusinessShow.com is brought to you by De Facto Shaving Oil, the best anyone can get. Made in Ireland, sold worldwide. Welcome to ThatGreatBusinessShow.com. I'm your host, Conal O'Moran. Please follow me on Twitter, where I'm known as at Conal O-M. This is episode 43 of Ireland's Best Business Podcast. Around three quarter of Ireland's adults use Facebook. So for businesses who are selling to consumers, it's an ideal way of communicating with them. However, lots and lots of businesses waste time and money talking to themselves because they don't have a clue how to use Facebook properly. I had a great chat the other day with a man from Limerick about this. And that's why we're going to call episode 43 our Facebook special. Because we're going to rip Facebook apart for you and show you some of the intriguing inner workings with real examples of how you can drive sales through the roof at little or no cost. So stay listening. These great business insights are brought to you by De Facto Shaving Solution, who sponsor that great business show. They back your business, so please back their business by buying the world's best shaving oil. And as creator Tom Murphy keeps reminding people, it's a shaving oil, not a beard oil. So it's for anyone who shaves. That's why he says it's the best anyone can get. Now, as I said, three quarters of Ireland's adult population has a Facebook page or account. So it sounds like a great place to try to engage with those people. Dave O'Hora, a director with a Limerick-based media, marketing and business development company called Southern, knows an awful lot about how best to use Facebook. So for about the next 45 minutes, we're going to talk about wearing tutus, talking to yourself, knowing who lives on Sesame Street, why you should know a young man called Kian Toomey, and one of my own favourites, why, if your business is a hotel, you should be advertising around the death notices. As always, we do business differently, and as always, Team GBS at The Great Business Show is on your side. Follow us on our LinkedIn pages for more. More, much more. Welcome to that great business show, Dave O'Hora. Thank you, Colonel. Good to be here. Was that your thing going ping there? That's direct from Facebook. (laughs) Direct from Facebook. You don't like Facebook really, do you? I do like Facebook, but I'm not a young man. Well, I'm a relatively young man, but a... a, We don't do age here. We don't do anything here. We we, I'm from, to put me in a little bit of context, uh, Southern is around for an awful long time number of years, more years than myself, literally. And we would have been an advertising agency. Uh, and an advertising agency in Limerick 40 years ago was an unusual thing, but that came about because another advertising agency called O'Kennedy Brindley went to Limerick and went to Cork because it had Fords and Ford Nagan. And Sachi and Sachi at the time bought the agency over 40 years ago and they didn't want to stay in the con- in the counties. So we did. Um, and we've all grown up since then and we were brought like a lot of people in our world cracking and screaming and dragged to social media uh, because it didn't behave like the other media it didn't compensate us like the other media and I think like a lot of other people at the beginning nobody really understood it but everybody was afraid to say that You can now see why I was an hour and a half on the phone with Dave O'Hora because all I asked him was, did he like Facebook or he didn't like Facebook? And now I've got a history of Limerick at this stage. So please continue. Well, I suppose, so you asked me about loving Facebook. I'm still not sure whether I love it or hate it or whatever else. But I tell you what I do, though. I I think for a long time and people uh, were of the opinion that they had to do things for Facebook and for social media. So now I've learned in the last number of years, uh, to ask not what you can do for Facebook, but what Facebook can do for you. So it's a channel. It's another thing. And once it's put in the right context, it's not as complicated as people think it is. And one of the clever things that you did is that you got involved with a Brazilian in Limerick. Yeah, well, he was a Brazilian who just had arrived in Limerick. And for years, in the old world, and it's still the, the, the world of advertising and media agencies, part of our job was looking at circulation, listenership, audience, and choosing the media that was best suited for people when we planned. Then along came social media, and it was answerable to nobody. It was full of numbers, 
But one day, a couple of years ago, I answered an email and it came from a man called Junior Siri and who calls himself Junior Siri. And Junior Siri is from Brazil and he had worked for many years with Leo Burnett, a world leading agency. And he was in a data analyst and still is a data analyst, but he's now a data analyst with us. And this story from Junior, very briefly, to my mind, epitomizes what data means. In 2018, Junior was part of a team in Leo Burnett who were tasked to help Samsung launch a new range. In Brazil. In Brazil. And they were trying to get market share back. So they had planned to spend a million dollars and they had targeted two big regions, Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, where they were going to launch and roll out the range. And Brazil, as you know, is vast. And Junior was part of the planning team for this. And he got nominated for a a very high award in advertising industry land. And the citation later on said, the man who took a world leading agency out of its comfort zone. And the potted version of this story is, Junior in the planning remembered that the agency had done a lifestyle survey. uh, And part of it was some question about mobile phones. And when he tracked that down, he found that Brazilian people change their phones on average every 18 months. And when Junior tells the story, this is the bit that goes, oh, he said the next thing he did, because he studied Facebook for years, he went to Facebook and he asked Facebook, would they put on a special filter? And by filter, it's like a qualifier that could they look and see what people in Brazil had phones over 16 months so that they were the most likely coming up to the 18 months. That's mad. That is possible to do. Yeah. So, lo and behold, Facebook said yes. And as a result, they came back and Junior identified uh, 300 places in Brazil that were more likely to deliver more. And they chose 30 of those. And they rolled out the campaign. Instead of sending a million phones, they sold 4 million. Instead of spending a million, they spent 5 million because they kept shooting the ducks as long as they were in the barrel. So good data and good data makes sense. But I'm not with Leo Burnett. So can I go to Facebook and ask them uh, how many three-eared males there are in Kerry? Yeah. Well, later on, but I'll keep it a secret for the moment, I'll tell you what we can tell about two kilometers from the studio we're sitting in, in Dundrum, and what Facebook can actually tell us about that. Well, why not do it now? Okay, well, here's very important information. To do that, let me just get something here because... Uh, Alison is going to go nuts because you're Alison, going you're off... you're all right. You're all <laughs> right. going off the microphone. There. So, here, around us, in a two-kilometer uh, radius of the Dundrum Shopping Centre, uh, there are a... Let me just give you the, the right... So... I have to get all of this in one second. That's no problem at all. We're, we're used to waiting okay. for... Okay, so there are 60,000 people in the area. Now, within two kilometers of here. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. Uh, in the 13 plus, right, who have a Facebook relationship. Okay. What, is it, what does a Facebook relationship mean? Facebook data, the data set it works from, is from Facebook, WhatsApp, and Messenger. That's all... That's an Instagram. So, so if Facebook I'm, if owned I'm, that world. If I'm only WhatsApp, I'm still counted as a Facebook person. Well, well the data that it can, it a, that can access from that data set. Wasn't there a big row about that, that uh, WhatsApp was not meant to be taking that data? Well, it's whether it's taking it or not, it's in the data set. Okay. So 57% of the people in, the, in this area are women uh, that are in the Facebook world. Uh, with the rest of them, 54% being men. There are 7,800 Apple phones uh, in the area and 1,900 Samsung phones, which is about in proportion with the rest of the country, a little bit over on the Apples. Um, and 4,400 of those Apple phones and some, uh, uh, sorry, 4,400 of the Apples and some Samsung mobile phones are over 25 months old. 
Okay. Now make money out of that for me. Well, if you were a man selling phones or a woman selling phones or anybody selling phones, you can actually target that group and actually find people who at two and a half years old are likely to be thinking of changing their phones. And I can drill right down into them. Yeah. Saying, dear Mary, but can you say... No, I see- you can't say, dear Mary. And actually, it gets interesting because once you get to a magic number like a thousand, the Facebook tells you it, the number is too low. However... If, what, what does too low mean? I it mean, means that you're getting dangerously close to being personal. Okay, it, that's interesting. So, for instance, if the number of people in this area who said they had a master's degree was below a thousand, it would say the number is too low. However, if you knew that the number of people who said they were interested in chess was a thousand, and you asked it, the number of people that were interested in chess and who were interested in a master's degree, you might get a figure of 1,200, at which point you could work out that the master's figure was 200. Okay, nice. Okay. like that. So going back to what I was saying, ask not what you can do for Facebook. Anyone in the business world out there who has used Facebook Ad Manager is familiar with the fact that you can ask it certain things so you build up your target audience. It's building that target audience on the knowledge that it has. Okay, that's understandable, yeah. Knowledge that we give it every day of the week. So it knows more because we tell it more. That's not a surprise. What most people don't do for long enough is actually work out what questions you can actually ask. Where do you find out where those can be asked or what they can be asked? <laughs> They're in that question, but you. But most of us are looking only for the moment that we're doing that particular boost or that campaign. So in other words, Colonel is, sir, is selling his MG, right? And he decides... I that, had an MG once, do you know say that? that? <laughs> <laughs> but the, man who, the man who bought that, contact us now. <laughs> you can have your money back. I'd but, say he's long, long yeah. in heaven. <laughs> but you can, you, in that case, you reckon that you're after men between 40 and 60 years of age going through a midlife crisis, <laughs> right? And you can target those, <laughs> right? Living in the drum drum area. And you get, and they, it, it will tell you that there are 2,700 of those, okay? And you can target those and boost your ad towards those. But normally when you do that, you forget about the number, right? You got it for that purpose. So one of the things we do is we actually take an area and we keep asking questions of it. So we keep going back into that tool and taking information out so that it gives us a profile of that area at various different levels. So the number of people in this area who are likely to buy online, because Facebook knows that they press commercial buttons yes. to buy online. So you begin to get a profile of an area, what it likes, what it dislikes, what it what it's made of, what age groups, and in time, that is going to be a really, really valuable added insight. Except that that is the stuff of bigger, not necessarily big, but bigger businesses. Mrs. Murphy's Coffee Shop or Jack Smith's Butcher, is are they going to benefit from this information? They, that's just the incredible bit. And this is supposed to whether coming from the old world of advertising and agencies. and All of us knew the local paper and the power of the local paper or the local radio or the next level up. And back in the day when we only had RT1 and RT2, life was very easy, right? But we still made it seem complicated. Now, this animal is all about small numbers and big numbers. But we always think about it in the big data, right? When, in fact, it's back to very simple basics. Mrs. Murphy, the butcher, or Mr. Murphy, firstly needs to decide who he really wants to talk to. Going viral in Uganda with pork sausages in Dundrum won't really make you money with unless you? you're going to yeah. sell it. Okay. So it's about using the medium in a really simple and smart way. And also 
deciding whether you need to use it at all. One of the things we specialize in doing now is audits to help people identify where they actually are. Because most people are now running their own radio station, their own TV show, and they're broadcasting in one form or another from their own front room with the channel. However, they have no idea, most of them, how big or how small their audience is. And a lot of people are investing not just money, but huge resources and time in doing something that they don't know what what it's doing for them. Talking to themselves, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the answer? Well, the answer actually really is a little bit of common sense. And I don't say that in any kind of a lecture way because we and our industry and business still at large, bigger business have got it. They understand it quite well. And Irish business, good business in Ireland, actually really good because what they're doing, and we see it every day, they're doing what Irish people do really well. They're telling stories really well. And that is the reason that at top of the charts are companies like Lidl, but they're not selling you apples or oranges or bananas. Yeah, again, recently we did a fairly big piece of research where we looked at the Facebook pages in Ireland, the most popular, the top 10 Facebook pages, and we broke it down by age groups, 18 to 25, 25 to 34, and we kept up. And at the beginning, it seemed like a little bit of pop research until you began to see the trends. And some of them seemed very strange until you thought about them. But Lil and Aldi are the number one pages in Ireland. Why? And at first you think, my God, what's Ireland got to? That Lil and Aldi would be. Because very often the content that's getting the engagement is not about five apples for a euro, right? Uh, in fact, the last, the, when we looked at the last six months among thousands of posts, the stuff with the most engagement for Lidl was a campaigning about uh, period pains. It was smart copy. It was also about saying that they weren't going to sell something because of the COVID, right? And people were responding to goodwill, good gestures, and good humor. Right? So these people know what good content is. And especially as people get older in Ireland, uh, they gravitate towards news. So it's fairly old uh, routine that people, as they get older, we go back to. 18 to 24-year-olds do all kinds of crazy stuff. Including follow this guy called Kean Toomey. We came K- across K- this. K. Hey, who yeah, is he? Exactly. He's a comedian, he's a young comedian, who I have to admit, I had never heard of until we did this. But in 16 counties in Ireland, Keen Toomey is huge. He is huge. So anybody who hasn't heard of Keen Toomey, go and look for him. But some of the other things on that research that came out was that people started, as they got older, they gravitated towards news. But also, they gravitated towards Amazon. So we now had new practices. Right, We compared Ireland with the UK. And again, in London, BBC comes back in, but right up there on top with the over 50s is Amazon because they're buying online. So it's showing us why and how people's lives are are changing. And what we engage in is some kind of reflection on ourselves. How and ever, you just said that we are great at telling stories, and I know that there are very, very good marketing and PR teams in uh, Aldi and in Lidl, but the large organizations, uh, Irish-owned organizations, are not featuring. It's um, the big lads are. Is that because, yeah, they're smart, but they also have the resources. Can you buy your way to the top? Well, sorry, there's a second point here about paying money and you in your introduction uh, has the whole world waiting to find out how you do this for nothing. Uh, Again, one of the things that we find when we do these audits is that Mark Zuckerberg has probably got two outside toilets and a jacuzzi because he likes to get paid for things. So yes, it might be possible that you'll go viral and you might get there for nothing. But in the normal scheme of things, no, 
if you're a commercial entity and you want to get heard or seen and you want to find your audience, you need to put some money with it. You have to give Mark his dollars. <laughs> his dollars. Now, are we talking about lots of dollars to Mark? No, it's relative. We recently did uh, an audit for a company and they had branches in various different parts of the country. And some of the branches had their own Facebook page. And part of what we do is try and estimate the size of audience that might be there for what they're saying. So in this particular case, we reckoned that this company had 30% of the audience that they might have in their area with their Facebook page, which wasn't a bad number, we thought. However, when we started to visualize that and then look a bit deeper, we said, let's draw a parish hall and put 100 seats in it and fill the, the front three rows because that's what they had. The hall was beginning to look fairly empty. This company was talking to Tom and Eileen in the front row. Now, for 15, 20, 25 euros, they could have been talking to a lot more. And they weren't being mean. What they were doing was being traditional. They were spending money on the local media. They're spending some money on the radio. And they were spending a couple of pop. But they were spending a lot of time on Facebook. And that time was valuable as well. So it's a matter of being focused on your audience, knowing what you can ask and who you can target, and then not being afraid to spend some money. I'm going to take a quick commercial break because that's uh, what you understand. Uh, we have a uh, we have people to keep happy, and that's why uh, I'm going to tell you: if you're going on holidays, you shouldn't pack big, bulky items like shaving foam cans. Switch to a nail varnish size bottle of de facto shaving oil, and you'll do your skin, your pocket, and your planet a big favor. I'm talking to Dave O'Hora, who's a director at Southern, and they are media and marketing and so much more in Limerick and in Cork. Dave, we'll continue to start, uh, con con continue to chat about matters Facebook. I'm going to bring you right back again, though, because I still haven't got my head around asking the right questions, because I've gone down this route a few times with people, and maybe I wasn't asking the right questions, or who will advise me? You, you, I know you can watch YouTubes and the rest. Yeah, you can. I, I think I, I really empathize with people about this because, first of all, it potentially is an age thing, right? There's a certain point in our life where we all hand the remote control over to the child and say, you, you sort that. It, social media in general came with that. There was knobs and buttons and you could maybe get it wrong and then suddenly you'd be all over the world. So a lot of people never, ever really engaged with the knobs and buttons. And a lot of people said, I don't care about it. I don't want it. I'm not interested. So that's okay. That's nearly okay. And I would safely say to anybody, if you've lived without it up to now, you can get on without it as well. But if you respect it a little bit like a phone, right? We're all over the novelty of a phone. But if you can imagine back when the phone came first and someone says, you know, you could ring somebody in New York. You could. And maybe the second time they rang, you rang them, they wouldn't listen to you. <laughs> Well, and the third time they report you to the police, right? With social media, if you have the same amount of respect for it, that there's no, if you actually imagine who wants to listen to me and who do I really want to talk to and who will I bother ringing? So there's an element here of saying, relax, be Columbo-like, ask the stupid questions, right? There, there is no stupid questions. And we find that we bring clients back in and we start to show them their, their analytics. And one of the things that we say is analytics that we do is analytics and data translation. Because I've had more clients look at graphs and nod. And it reminds me of when I look at the weather forecast. I'm waiting until that nice man says at the end, it's going to rain tomorrow, right? The rest of the lows and highs, I really never got my head around. I so agree with you. Right? It is such a waste of time. Yeah. So Facebook, Twitter, they are all full of graphs and knobs if you go looking for it. So really, you do need someone who's going to tell you, Connell, you yesterday got three likes right, and four shares. 
And they were all from your cousins, right? And they were all laughing at you. So you don't really have an audience, Colonel, right? And you'd be better off staying at home, right? And I'm watching off my Facebook and, account. And watching reruns of Live at Three because you don't really rate. So there's an element here that's hard to believe. A lot of people are on the wrong channels. A lot of people have bought the belief, if I'm not in the game, I'm not at the game. And the last thing that, that really big organizations aren't doing is they're not stopping to actually compare. Right? They do it when they buy when they buy big media, but they don't compare themselves with their peers. Ah, go on. They must. Well, Are you telling me that the marketing head of whatever isn't comparing herself with the marketing head of the, uh, the say, uh, the, the, the rival uh, shop or whatever? Big brands are. Okay. But middle-sized brands, it's, it's, it's not that easy, actually, because depending on how busy those people are in, in each of them in terms of posting, there's a whole lot of stuff up there. So actually trying to identify who got what. So we measure by engagement, as we call it, which is a combination of likes, shares, and comments, right? So it's kind of the ultimate. Uh, but... <sighs> When people like something, hmm. they're liking it for a whole heap of reasons. Yeah. One of them might be because they actually like it, or he might be your pal and say, oh God, I better like this. Yeah. Or you might actually be doing it to get it up for the fella. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's fine. And after a while, if there's a trend in that, if you bother to look, right, you're back to the four cousins story, right? The only people that are liking you on LinkedIn is your four cousins and the fella that you like. <laughs> right, and again in LinkedIn, which is a fabulous channel, but you see all these lovings. You see people having <laughs> great stuff. Tom really yeah. liked it. Mary, well done. And what is worse now because LinkedIn actually write it for you. Yeah, <laughs> all you have to do is click on it, and fills so, out the page. So for you. <laughs> when when we look at this, and but when when you really look at content that people that engages people that engage people. Well, give me three minutes on engaging com uh, uh, content, including tutus. Tutus, well, yeah. Okay, well, engaging content uh, is about telling stories well. If you look at Little and Aldi, who we mentioned earlier on, their top posts in the last six months have included uh, getting ready to do a Jerusalem, right, with the local Gardaí, responding... I didn't know where you were going to go with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> responding comically to a, a complaint from a customer uh, about the number of Pringle-like things they got in it and the last four inches. Um, and it was smart. It was, uh, and it was about period poverty, period poverty. So here's an organization that nobody would have believed 10 years ago would be on the number one list of Facebook-like pages for a huge part of the country. And the reason is simple, sensible content. Now, you need to have confidence to do that. And when we were talking earlier on, I, I still think it's a bit like we don't have nightclubs like we used to have. But there's an element here. There's a lot of people going into the wrong nightclubs, <laughs> dressed wrongly, right, in tutus. As you mentioned, <laughs> and they're wondering when they come back out where they don't have a lot of friends or it didn't work. <laughs> but they keep going back in the next day and the tutus get worse sometimes. <laughs> So it's not a bad idea to sit down and measure who, how did you get on last night? How did you get on yesterday? And joking apart, what is frightening is the number of people who've never looked over the wall to see how do we compare with the other ones? Now, Ireland, as it happens, we did something for a, a government body recently and they wanted to see how they were doing and in the comparison, they wanted to look at somebody in Scotland and uh, in Wales. And the Irish content in this sector was really, really good. And the engagement was good. It was very simple, but we had the guts, as it happened, to do it. And this, again, is what people forget about online. We can audit somebody in New York because that's the beauty of it. So we have a whole new business section that we've set up. Um, which is now exportable because uh, online has no respect for size. Which is what we love. Yeah. Or barter. Yeah, we love this stuff, yeah. Um, but go back to the content, the conversion from content. I'm top of the heap 
on the Facebook likes and everything else, convert that into business? Or is it all El Flam? And yeah, they love you, but they don't actually go into you. They don't buy your, your gear or your yeah. candles or whatever. Very good point. Um, and again, it comes down to common sense. There is no... People running competitions, like and share this and we'll give you this, right? Uh, I have a sister who has to wear a cast on her hand from entering competitions, practically. <laughs> I'm not talking about your sister. <laughs> but but I, do, you, do you know... Hang on a second. Do you know what they're called in the business? No. Prize pigs. <laughs> because they spend their days <laughs> trying to win prizes. And they're actually banned in both... Good radio stations ban them. They see Mick Murphy and they put in prize pig. <laughs> and off they go. Yeah. So we don't really, when we measure people, we don't normally count competitions as being taken into the full engagement circle. So let's go back to the butcher shop. Mary and John Murphy running the butcher shop in Dundrum Village who want to do the two mile radius of their customers. Good engagement for them is relative in that size, right? Unless they want to be pop stars, right? So that's okay. A national organization that wants to be meaningful to people between 30 and 50 should be using social media really effectively. And one of the analogies we use is that if you imagine a website like a library, okay, where people come for reference to find out things, to do things, social media, those channels are like mobile libraries. They go out into the community. And they are your conduit where people get small bits of information if that's all they want. And then they go from there into your website. And that's all followable, traceable, trackable, right? So Mary and Tom McCarthy take on and make a new range of sausages for the barbecue season. They can use their Facebook or their Twitter or their Instagram to show them cooking that or what they made it from. And they can use that link to bring people into their simple website where you can pre-order and collect your pound of sausages. That's not magic. 20 years ago, they were ringing and saying, Tom, give me some of them sausages. <laughs> right? No, it's just a different way of can do. But you couldn't show the sausages before and you couldn't show them being made. So do any, any Irish, I was going to say Irish companies, but any company, do they really, really have to up their game in terms of the content, particularly visual content, because that is where it's going, isn't it? Yeah, and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter change the rules all the time. So they don't make it easy. They don't want to make it easy because that's how the interest stays. However, what doesn't really change is if you have half an idea of who the audience is and if you're half sensible of not staying up all night – then you can do it in a measured way. Bigger brands can put the resources behind it, can look at what content is working, can analyze it, and can pay companies like us, quite frankly, to show them where they might be. Not uh, They can make their own content if they need to be. Sent. However, it, these channels aren't going to go away. They're not hocus pocus. They're very logical. What underpins them is information that we give them. So they know more about us. To give you an example, there's a newspaper, the, uh, the hotel I know, who with a local newspaper, in their online version, puts their ad every week in the debt notices, in the online debt notices, because they get a great spin-off for after the funerals, and they have done for two years, because it makes perfect sense. The people looking there are the people looking at the debt notices very often the people who place them. So that's where online, but we're a lot of businesses out there are still in the old world and I forgive them for that. So they're used to buying half pages and quarter pages and 20 ads for a pound or whatever it is. And the online thing is too confusing. And the media, some of the traditional media are doing really, really well. The, the biggest page in Ireland for engagement with the biggest percentage of people in its area is actually a media page. It's Donegal Daily. I saw that number. Yeah. What are they doing that is so right? They are doing today's news today for the area. 
as it happens, right, and they're doing it in a vast way, like sports, social, cultural, brilliant. And they're doing it because they can do. Uh, likewise, uh, in Limerick, the Limerick leader, whose traditional newspaper is is the circulation has been dropping, not through a lack of quality. Just they all are, unfortunately, but there you go. But for every age group online, with the exception of 18 to 24, it's the most popular Facebook page because their online offering is so strong. Now, here's a question, and we're, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of um, the other social media outlets, uh, but Facebook is getting older like the rest of us, <laughs> and so therefore your 18 to 24s may not even be on Facebook anymore. Yeah, and that's going to change, and TikTok has come along. But if you watch what happened there, like Facebook on Instagram, they own WhatsApp. This is about knowledge and insight. So the color of the phone may change, the apparatus that we use to get it, but it will all still be about who knows what about us and who can deliver an audience. Dave O'Hora, stay right there. We have to take a quick break. You're listening to That Great Business Show. ThatGreatBusinessShow.com ThatGreatBusinessShow.com is brought to you by De Facto Shaving Oil. The best anyone can get. Made in Ireland, sold worldwide. That Great Business Show. I'm talking here to Dave O'Hora of Southern, who are a Limerick-based media, marketing and business development company. Dave, again, our audience are going to be mostly SMEs. They're listening. They say, yeah, okay, get this now. What best could they do? Let us go away from the butcher and the candlestick maker. Let us say a suit shop. Nobody buys suits anymore. What can they do to try to make people buy suits or get people to buy suits? Okay, it's a very good question. A very good friend of mine who's also a client is a man called Tony Conley. And Tony owns Conley Men's and they have six branches. Uh, and... Tony was 50 years in business uh, at Christmas. Uh, and we made a little video piece with Tony talking about the story of his business. And the level of engagement and goodwill that was he got from that, the number of people who said fabulous things about him and wished him well. And right now, you can't actually buy a suit online from Tony because he's chosen, you can see it, And you could, if you knew exactly what you wanted, you could. But he's not really trying to sell you. But he, the online there, he used his leverage with a local audience to deliver a really honest, great story. And they came to the shop and thanked him. They went online and thanked him. He would have been nice if he could finish it. But actually, in a funny way, his customers, what they really love is the fact that Tony and the lads always look after them. So one, use it that way. Use the channel. It mightn't finish the deal, right? It mightn't sell it. It might not bring it to a sale, even though everyone says you should. But you are maintaining and growing a relationship. That's one. But on that one, on that particular one, he has one story to tell. What happens the next month and the next month and the next month? Tony, whole business over 50 years, the strongest core brand value that he's had is friendship, right? He doesn't hang it on the door. He doesn't hang it anywhere. It's to treat people like friends. So when you look at the content, right, and about being a proud Limerick and Monster man, so they run very simple content most of the time, but most of it is a direct connection with being proud to be from the place, proud of his friendships, proud of his people. And that one consistent thing that you like in a friend is enough to keep it going. And is that on Facebook or Instagram? Or It's on Facebook and a combination of Instagram. Uh, there's a couple of women in Ireland in boutiques who are running one people TV shows. They're trying on the outfits. They're talking to their audience. They're broadcasting live. Go and find them. There's a, they are brilliant. They're not worried about the full production values. They're showing the little red dress. They're talking to Eileen and Mary that they've got to know wherever they might be. And they're packing up the dress the next morning and sending it off to wherever it's going. They've embraced it 
100%. And they haven't really over-worried about putting the TV studio into the, the room. You can do it on the back of the phone anyway. So, you know, the phone is as good a quality nowadays anyway. So, yeah. But it's, it's in a way, Irish people really like when it's either very good or very authentic. I was going to say, are you going to say very bad? Because I love, I love, if you can do bad brilliantly, it's fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is, and there's a lot of that out there. But actually, most of the time, and we, we that's what one of the things we do when we do the audits, is go and look at what the comparison uh, content is, so people can learn either from their competitors or their peers. But going back to where he started, in, when we do audits, the amount of money that we see wasted by people, not just spending boosting, but on the manpower that they're using and their people power to, one, go on channels they shouldn't be on, two, create content that isn't going to engage. So just to stop you on the point one there, driving onto channels that they shouldn't be on, is that, do they go there because, well, Mary's there, John's there, we better be there? <laughs> yeah, there's an element that at the end of every website you see social media and people say, look, they have a Twitter thing and they have, a, they have another one of them LinkedIn things and they've only one of them and we should be on Facebook. There's a lot of businesses have, if they're B2B, there's a question mark as to whether they should be on Facebook at all. Uh, your own program is business. LinkedIn is your world. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's a different animal. It's actually, in the last number of years, it's getting into the likes and shares business a bit. Which again, the likes I just worry about because again, I'm a very, very keen on Twitter, but when somebody just likes something, sure, that's a, you may as well be talking to the wall. If you retweet, that makes so much more sense. So please retweet anything that you do. Listen, we're going to run out of time and there's a ton. Can people see all this information that you've already given me? You've got so much information. For example, now you haven't got anything in front of you and I have. Uh, Talk to me about the pubs. There about are pubs the what? Here. The pubs on Pucon and Galway, Garavogue and Sligo, Langton's and Kilkenny, the Imperial Bar and Cavan, Tully's Bar and Scrag's Alley in Carlow. The brand that reaches most of the Facebook population in the county is in Sligo, 23% as they follow the Garavogue. Or, yeah. yeah. So there are very few pub. A couple of things. In the piece of research where we looked at the brands across age groups across Ireland, uh, only about five or six pubs featured. But well, why would anybody go onto a pub page? Well, it's a sign of a changing Ireland. It, maybe 20 years ago, right, a pub could have been the centre of the world. Right, Copperface Jacks was a fairly was mentioned <laughs> very often in all kinds of things, so uh, it mightn't have been that unusual. Whereas now it is, and there's only five pubs across all of those counties that came to get into the top ten. Right? Um, to what benefit? It's well, I think it's these are facts as distinct from benefit. Right? What it means or what it indicates is that a lot of people like to engage with them. Right? But now, does that again? turn into pints sold or... Uh, may not. It may not. Uh, but then what's the point? Well, the point is, they would say, probably, that this maintains a relationship with people, right? Okay. It actually maintains it, that they can tell them things, show them things. And very often, it's a bit like the family album. We're all looking at ourselves, looking at ourselves. So they may be just getting back on to see what they look like on Saturday night. Okay. Home Store and More. Talk to me about Home Store and More. Yeah. The, apart from Little Aldi, some super value uh, pennies, again, right up there at the top of things. But very few brands came through. Home Store and More, uh, with the, but again, makes sense. With the over 30 and over 35-year-olds, they feature and they think about 16 counties where they make the top 10. So here's a brand, a homegrown Irish brand. It's a great job. Yeah, great job. <laughs> I love it. Right? But what's interesting here is that everything has changed and nothing has changed. If Roach's stores were alive and well, that's probably the position that they would be in. Right? That's where you bought your wedding present or your afters for a wedding. You could buy a single row electric blanket as a present for, if you were invited to the <laughs> afters from Roach's stores. But the great thing is you could change it. And Home Store and More are kind of 
doing, uh, but it's brilliant. They've done, they've built a great brand. And do you know what drives that? Is that again, content, 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 clever, yeah. clever, clever? And the same with Penny's. Penny's content, their biggest posts in the last six months have been smart posts and friendly posts about COVID related things and about making appointments for shopping. People actually like Penny's. Well, obviously, because they yeah, have they like queues. It. Queues, well, of course they do, yeah. But they have queues and queues and queues outside trying to get in. Well, certainly during COVID times. They, uh, it does what it does fantastically. Yeah, and it, it must treat people reasonably well in doing it. Okay. Lad Bible. Wow. Again, now, you're talking to the wrong boy here. Yeah, well, you're talking to the wrong boy here as well. You know, Lad Bible uh, is coming up Again, but you to look at where it is. 18 to 24-year-olds. Number one. Number one. 25 to 34, number, number one. one. Yeah. And then they disappear. <laughs> yeah. But you look at Joe.ie. I mean, Joe.ie is doing really well. RTE1. They're way ahead, yeah. Right. But again, it, they only start to make sense as we get older. But that's not, well, it is content, but they're not putting up clever content. I go there to see the news. I don't bother watching the 9 o'clock news anymore. Just go online on to... Uh, uh, on the phone. What would you do? Why do you go to their, you, you go to their website? But why are people going to their Facebook? Ah, oh, sorry. I go to the website. Yeah. Or to the, to the app, yeah. actually. So, again, it is about content, but Archie have always been one of the greatest content makers ever. And they continue to be great content makers. It's the age group that the struggle is for. So, the, in the, the Irish Independent or Independent.ie and the Sunday Independent. Which presumably is going to become Media House at some stage. Yeah. They just about make the top 10, but it's in the 60 plus. That's how they get in there, in that age group. Uni lad. Again, a bit like lad Bible. I'd say it does what it says in the tin. Well, I haven't seen the tin, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Now, Retail facts. I, I, again, I'm just going through these. I mean, there's so much information you guys have. McDonough Junction Shopping Centre is the brand that reaches most of the Facebook population in Kilkenny. Yeah. So, again, it was just, there, was, there wasn't, apart from Little Aldi Primark, there, was, there wasn't a huge amount of retail sparkle. And there wasn't a huge amount of traditional brands. Junior Siri, who I mentioned earlier on, who worked on this particular project, would have said in... In Brazil, this would have been Coke and Pepsi and clothes brands. None of those really made it to the top 10 in Ireland. So we're becoming less brand driven, right? The fact that Lil and Aldi are up in the top, again, we're less, we're over that, right? And that all happened. We can all remember when that happened. When we stopped being millionaires about 10 years ago, we all, it was okay <laughs> to shop in Lil and Aldi, right? Uh, so what we're finding is that there's the odd flash in the, right, where somebody is doing it right in that area. But on our website, southern.ie, we have a whole list of this where people can go and look at counties. And it really is interesting. Now, I'm not finished with you yet because you also compare with London and with New York and for some reason Dubai, uh, but London and New York. And there are there's one website on both of those or one Facebook page on those, Tasty. Never heard of it. Yeah. What are they doing right that we, somebody in Ireland must be able to, we have uh, taste.ie or the, or what is it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's not tasty as in, you know what I mean? It's yeah. not, not the same thing that I think of. Uh, yeah. And it's not really unusual. When you look at television and the rest of the thing, food has become so important. We've all gone one step further from bacon and cabbage and that's reflected across the world. So tasty. Uh, and here in Ireland, we love food. We are, we are interested in, in cooking. and But food. it's not showing on the top. Couple not yet. Of, yeah. Not yet. But I, I, I'd nearly argue that Little and Aldi, right, are every week introducing us to foods. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, and that's part, it's the surprise element. Every time that we, you know, when they have a, a Polish week or a French week or an Italian week, we've all been sampling over the years. Yeah, okay, I get that, yeah. Right, we're going to wrap up for, and I'm going to do three, uh, two things. First, I'm going to ask you three brilliant ideas from Dave O'Hora for those who want to make millions on their Facebook, out of their Facebook pages. Wow. 
โอเค ring me ring me ring me and do and do and do they do actually know what they're talking about okay well I would say actually put on a raincoat be Colombo go into Facebook ads and start looking at what kind of sectors you can find when it says who do you want to target have a look at what's inside there pick your own area pick the target audience you think you want to talk about and see What it allows you to look at and point at. We were doing a project recently where we we're looking for nurses, theatre nurses in the orthopedics, and we could find that we could look in the UK, target hospitals, and target the radius of a hospital, and maybe say we'd like people blah 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 blah. So if you don't know that you can, so play inside that fi- ad manager in Facebook, find out about your audience. That's all free because you can play around yeah. for free. Yeah. yeah. So that's a definite. Okay. Second thing is buy a mirror and take a good long look at where you are currently, how much time you're spending on it, and what kind of realistic responses you're getting, and then be brave enough to actually look at two or three other people in your sector, right? Look at their followers. That's one thing. But then go back down and look at their likes and shares and what's happening in that world. Right, and maybe you might find out that you're not bad at all, or maybe you find out you're both very boring people. <laughs> okay, that's two. Give us one last. <laughs> and I think I that, what about money, cash, mo- money, to spend yeah, or not to spend? Yeah. That is the question. Remember, poor Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> <laughs> is you are not going to get very far without spending something. Anybody who's doing well on that, congratulations, well done. I'm not arguing with you. That is brilliant. But in general, you need to spend something. Have a chat with your own local media, and ask them how they're doing online. Because what do you mi- mean with your own local media? Well, newspapers and radio stations locally have very strong online presence. Except a lot of people aren't used to buying it, as I mentioned earlier on. They don't, they know how to buy a four-inch double column and fifteen twenty-second ads. The social, the online stuff, they leave that for the minute, right? When they maybe shouldn't. Maybe they should just sit down and have an, a good conversation. And when you blend those things, but are you saying you have to go down to your Limerick leader yeah. and you chat to the advertising department there, yeah. and they will work with you on social? They will. The problem is you probably won't want to work with them because it'll start to get a little tedious because the language changes, right? Okay. But if you can get over the language change, right, and if you start to realize that. The story you'd love to see in the paper, maybe you can actually get it in there. Maybe you can actually pay for it to be put in. It's called native, right? So the rules have changed, right? What you can do, the man who's putting his ads in the debt notices, right? That's because he can. So the builder who wants to be where the planning applications are. Yes, I get right. it. Okay. So context. Yeah. Okay. There are the three. Now you know what the last question is. Hmm. Who would Dave O'Hara hire in a heartbeat? That's a very good question, Colonel. And um, I almost forgot to send you the email. So <laughs> no, no, you're all right. Um, I, I think I've possibly hired him in a heartbeat already. His name is Junior Siri. Well, He's a data a nice analyst. One. Okay. And uh, he, some months back, got his visa. He and his wife came to Ireland in their thirties to start a new world. Uh, really brave move. He loves the place, um, and he's brilliant at what he does. And we're very lucky to have him. Well, that's a lovely choice. And Junior, I love your work because I have gone through it. And uh, of course, I'm a bit of a nerd for this kind of stuff. I'm like Dave, Dave O'Hara. Thanks for travelling from Limerick to join us on that great business show. Yeah, and uh, and sorry, Colonel, if I could, it's Southern.ie, and you go to Facebook data, and you'll find. Uh, a treasure chest there, and you'll also find a contact details if you need to get us. And if you want more of that lovely Limerick accent, his name is Dave O'Hora. I love it. I love Terry it. Wogan. It makes me <laughs> smile. <laughs> and that is it from that great business show episode forty three. And as always, my thanks to the team here at Dublin South FM Podcast Studios, Ireland's best podcast studios. Our sound engineer Alison O'Dwyer gets loads and loads of likes from us on her Facebook page because we all like her. 
Her likeable colleague, Peter Rice, will be dropping in stings, segues and ads later on, which is a good time to remind you that we offer the best value advertising aimed at Ireland's best business community, including 250,000 SMEs. And if you know of a great business that should be featured on Ireland's best business podcast, please don't hesitate Tell us all about them on our website, thatgreatbusinessshow.com, or via our LinkedIn page, where we have great conversations with past, present, and future guests. And I think that's where I came across you, Dave, wasn't it? Uh, we had met, met before, but uh, we reignited our interest in each other on our LinkedIn page. Finally, my thanks to our sponsor, DeFactoShave.com, the world's best shaving oil. Try it for a week, and like me, you will be a forever convert. So for me... Come along, Moran. Until next week, Slan Tom. Tom.